God is said. Our Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for your words, the Bible, Holy Bible. Blessed instruction before leaving the earth. And we pray that the instruction you give us in your word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. And we pray that the necessary preparation that we need to put in place before we leave this world, you give us the earnestness and you give us the sincerity and you give us the spirituality that will help us to be who we ought to be as we come to you finally in Jesus' name. And we're asking that no member of our body, our tongue and other members of the body will lead the whole body to perdition and hell on the final day in Jesus' name. Be with us as we study tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A good, good headquarters. Amen. God bless you. We're coming back to James chapter 3. And uh, we've studied already by the grace of God, chapter 1, verses 1 to 27. And we've studied chapter 2, verses 1 to 26. Now we come to chapter 3 of James. And as you look at verse 1, look at verse 1 there. It says, my brethren, be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater damnation. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, For in many things we offend. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle, to control the whole body. The Lord is uh, giving us a such light on our tongue today. The tongue is very important, very essential. What could we do? Where could we go? What progress could we make without the tongue? This little member, the tongue, very essential, very important, very indispensable. But the tongue, even though it can give us progress, what the tongue we confess that Christ is Lord. With the tongue, we get salvation. With the tongue, we come back. Like I say, I came to the Lord and he said, I am an unclean man. Then the fire touched his tongue and touched his leaves. And then he was sanctified. It's by that tongue we call upon the Lord and we tell him that we surrender, surrender all, and we're sanctified. And when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, we speak in other tongues. It is the tongue that expresses that all the language that we pray to the Lord. It is the tongue that prays to the Lord and says, Lord, this is what I need. Are we preaching the word? Are we telling other people about the eternal life that Christ has provided for us? It is through the tongue. And yet, it is that same tongue that ruined Pharaoh. And he said, who is that God that I should obey him? It is that same tongue that ruined and destroyed Nebuchadnezzar. See, this is the Babylon I built for myself. It is the same tongue that wrecked and ruined Absalom. It is the same tongue that destroyed Ahithophel. It is the same tongue that destroyed Judas Iscariot. So, you might have on this side, the tongue positive, the tongue progressive, the tongue prayerful, and the tongue purposeful. On the other hand, you might use the tongue in a wrong way that makes you to, uh, to kind of lose all the privilege the Lord would have given you in life, in church, as well as in heaven. That's why the Lord is giving us uh, instruction today. And if we're having divine such light on our tongues, divine such light on your tongue, that tongue can promote you. 
that tongue can prepare you for heaven that tongue can also derail you and destroy you and make you not to have the life on high that we need to have divine such light on our tongue we're dividing the message today to three parts number one we're looking at the characteristics of men's tongues without conversion to christ those who are still natural those who are just by themselves they do not have the grace of god or the salvation of the lord they are natural men and women and we have the characteristics of man's tongue without conversion to Christ. Number two, number two is the control of mammoth big creatures with man's a kind of a manipulating cord or cane, a little rod, a little cane, a little hem, a little instrument that man devises and uses to control great, great, big, large creatures. Number three, we're looking at the communication of our little member for commendation or for condemnation. The little member, that's the little tongue that acts like fire. And fire may do something good, fire may do something bad, little fire that kindles a great conflagration and we have the communication of a little member for either condemnation or commendation we're looking at number one number one is the characteristics of men's tongues without conversion to christ we're looking at once again at james chapter 3 looking at verse 1 it says my brethren is talking to believers and he's talking to believers about the use of the tongue why oh believers need to understand you and i need to understand your tongue can build your family your tongue can break your family your tongue can develop you your tongue can destroy you your tongue can make you progress in life and your tongue can bring you down in life many of the things that we experience and that we ourselves bring upon our lives it is the tongue that does that that's why it says my brethren be not many masters be not many teachers be not many talkers be not many directors be not many people that are always talking and talking we're not controlling our lives we're trying to control the lives of other people it says watch yourself mind your business and think about what you ought to be in life and think about your tongue being used to make you progress in life my brethren be not many masters knowing that we believers shall receive the greater condemnation look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says for in many things we offend all in many things of the tongue we offend strangers we offend all we offend neighbors we offend all we offend our husbands we offend all we offend our wives in many things with the tongue we offend our wives who offend all will offend our leaders will offend all will offend our subordinates will offend all it is the tongue if you kept quiet if you didn't say anything because the words that come out they may be words of deception they may be words of anger. They may be words of flattery. They may be words of slander. They may be words of deception that leads people in the wrong direction. Because in many things we offend, or if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. If any man offend not in word, and the spirit of god controls his heart because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and 
as it's under control, under the control of the scripture, under the control of the sovereign Lord, under the control of the Spirit of God, if any man, by the control of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit upon his tongue, offends not in word, he, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle, control the whole body. The one who cannot control the tongue will not be able to control his mind, his direction in life. Will not be able to control his heart. Will not be able to control the body. Will not be able to control anything. He'll be like a person let loose. He's loose in word. And he's loose to the world. He's loose in word. And he's loose. You cannot control him. The wind drives him here and there. Because he offends in word. And he offends all. But the one that is able to bridle the tongue the one that is able to bridle the body. We're looking at three things. Look at number one. Number one is the concern for many talkers without mastery over their tongues. Number two is the, condemn, is the condemnation of misused tongues without caution or control. Number three, number three is conversation with mindful tongues, meaningful tongues consecrated to Christ. Look at number one. Number one there is talking about the concern for many talkers without mastery over the tongue. Uh, you'll see James by the Spirit is concerned, concerned for the tongue of man, the tongue of the believer, the tongue of the preacher, the tongue of the backslider, the tongue of the careless, the tongue of the prodigal is concerned about the tongue of everyone. That's why you find him mentioning the tongue or mentioning the speech in every chapter. Every chapter of James. Look at chapter 1. We're reading from verse 19. In chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Uh, there are people, uh, they've had the first part of a sentence, they've had the first paragraph of a page, they've read the first page of a chapter, and they begin to talk. Why don't you slow down? Hear it all. No, no things that are still coming on. Be slow to speak and slow to rise. Uh, there are people like David, uh, they, they are told the parable by Nathan, and then they are, they are wrathful. They get angry. How can somebody do that? Thou art a man. So be slow to speak and be slow to wrath. In verse 26, it tells us in verse 26, If any man among you seem to be religious, if any woman among you seem to be religious, if any person among you seem to be zealous, fervent, Anatica, if any man among you, anyone among you, seem to be religious and bright, let not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. How does he deceive his own heart? I'm saved. You are deceiving yourself if your tongue is not under your control. I am sanctified. You are deceiving yourself if your tongue cannot be bridled. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I am spiritual. I am high spiritually. A self-deception. If anyone does not bridle his own tongue, but deceiveth his own self, this man's religion is vain. You know, it's not a crime to be quiet. Rather, it's a crime to be too loud and to talk all the time and the tongue wagging all the time. It tells us in chapter 2 
I'm reading from verse 19, chapter 2, verse 19. The believers, there is one God that does well. The devils also believe and tremble. Verse 20, in verse 20, it says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You talk, 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 and there's no evidence you are ever under control. Would you know that when your actions are not under control, your speech not under control, your behavior not under control, your comportment, your conduct not under control, and you are just here and there, I'm born again, I am deeper? No, you are not deeper, you are shallow. You do not have control over your life. Look at chapter 3. In chapter 3, we're looking at verse 8. It tells us in chapter 3, verse 8, it says, But the tongue can no man tame. It doesn't say God cannot tame a tongue. No man tame. The tongue, Christ can tame that tongue. The Spirit of God can tame that tongue and the salvation of the Lord can give you self-control. But by yourself, and that's how you know the people are just coming to church, you watch them, you say, but why is this man acting like that? Why is this woman talking like this? You cannot uh, understand, except you understand, they don't have the controller in the heart. They don't have the redeemer in the heart. And because the one, the Lord, the authority, the sovereign that can control the heart is not there. That there is in there the way they are because they by themselves cannot control their tongue, they cannot control their mind, they cannot control their heart, they cannot control the direction in which they go. That uh, the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Look at chapter 4. In chapter 4, he tells us in verse 11. Chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Speak not evil one of another you know the people that go about they have a story to tell uh, they have a war story in their lives but they look at other people they're delighted they can have something a stain a spot in the life of their neighbor to talk about and they go about bearing tales it says speak not evil of one another brethren he that speaketh evil of his brother of his sister he that speaketh evil of his neighbor he that speaketh evil of leaders in the church he that speaketh evil of members in the church judge and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and it says, it judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law. But he judge. Look at chapter 5, verse 12. In chapter 5, verse 12, it says, But above all things, my brethren, swear not at all there are people uh, swearing is too close too near to their mouth and they mention the name of god and take the name of god in vain have you done this little thing minor thing yes i did or yes i've not done it i'm thinking of doing it i'm planning uh, or doing it but immediately they swear to god and jesus said don't swear and these people church people church goers church commons members of a denomination members of a so-called church 
they swear and swear and swear above above all things my brethren swear not neither by heaven neither by the earth neither by any other oath but let your yea be yea if you're a child of god i'm going there yeah, you go there let your yes be yes let your nay be nay because whatsoever lets ye fall into condemnation look at number two here number two here we're looking at the condemnation of misused tongues without control or without caution or control hey, let's come back to verse one in verse one it says my brethren my brethren are you born again we have the same family my brethren are you born again and the grace of god has taken effect in your life my brethren if you are a brother if you are a sister you do unto me as you expect me to do unto you if you are a member of the family of god you do unto her as you want her to do unto you and that will put a check on our tongue that will put caution that will put control because i wouldn't want him to talk to me like that not just the word not just the word not just the tongue the temper that comes with that word not just uh, the temper the thought that is behind that word when you talk to the other person before you talk understand he is my brother she is my sister and because we're members of the same family we want to check and control what we say it says my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation because god is a silent listener to every conversation everything we say and the words that come out he knows the thought behind the world he knows the purpose the plan the plot he knows the hatred at the root of the words that we speak that is why he says be not many masters look at verse 2 in verse 2 for in many things will offend all uh, have you looked at how you lost some important friends and the fellow said well i tried to be a friend to him i tried to be a friend to her but our words always caught down it cuts from above it cuts from beneath it wants to make him her become like his tongue when you cut the branches and you cut the roots and because of that because we offend in many worlds because we offend we break our families because we offend we make other people feel this is not a compatible person to live with to stay with because of the offense of the word and then he tells us why many things will offend us if any man offend not in word if any man offend not in word the people that have studied how we speak a conversation everything they say that men speak twenty-five thousand words every day and when you put all that together in one week you can write a volume a big volume of a book when you put that together in a month twenty-five thousand words in a day and it says you know those who have done the study they said women speak thirty thousand words in a day you know you wake up in the morning there are things to say and there are things to say to yourself self-talk the things to say to people around you that will spoil their day and before you even go out at all 
you knock that down with your word you knock the other fellow with your word and then you go after you've gone you see remembering what you said you spoiled their day you spoiled their mind and they're thinking how, how can a woman how can a man say this early in the morning to somebody while you're happy and while you're kind of you know planning i'll do this i'll do that then he brings the word you are down and then you go to the office you and of the in the office there you speak and speak and speak and as you come back from the office conversation begins again you just feel the discomfort of quietness you cannot be quiet we need to be quiet think about your life think about the future think about your progress and think about the things of lost. think about your spiritual life and think about the changes that ought to be made if you thought about that you will not feel any discomfort where there is quietness but it says it will offend on if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man is a matured man is a complete man is a thoughtful man is a purposeful man the one that offends not in word now what do i gain to talk to him and make him angry when you think like that you're a thoughtful man you're a matured man you're a perfect man what is going to be the result i shall build him up i shall build the family up i shall encourage this young fellow and i should make his life positive now that's being thoughtful that being perfect that being matured but when we speak as we throw words, as we throw stones at people, now, what do I gain? If I pick up stones and all the houses around in the neighborhood, I break their windows with stones, throw it there, throw it there, throw it there. Anywhere you are going, you see any stone, look at a stone, spear stone there, you pick it up and throw, watch do you gain look at all the people around you the stone of words that will pick up and throw here shatter his window throw there destroy a door throw it there and control and destroy their temper they, they become destabilized by the things by the words we throw he said that will not be right. He says, if we're mature, if we're thoughtful, if we're purposeful, we'll not be throwing things all around like that. In Romans chapter 2, reading there from verse 20, Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 20, he says, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes which has the form of knowledge and uh, of the truth of the Lord. Look at verse 21. It says in verse 21, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest not thou thyself. Isn't that where to begin? When you teach yourself, that word you are so eager to, you know, push out and send out, swallow that word. Meditate on that word. Think of that word. Apply that word to your own life. Thou that instructs others, don't you instruct yourself? Thou that teaches others, don't you teach yourself? Thou that wants to control others, why do you want to control somebody's life? It's like, you know, uh, you want to control a driver. Do you know where he's going? You want to control the driver. Do you know his destination? You want to control the driver. Do you know his plan? You, when you want to control other people's lives, 
Do you know their purpose in life? Do you know where they want to go? Do you know their plan for the day? Do you know their consecration and commitment? Here is what God has called them to do and they want to do that. But the fellow that does not know the internal working in the life of a man, internal working in the life of a woman, and wants to control with words. You see somebody very quiet, very thoughtful, very meditative, and you feel the discomfort of his quietness. The man is thinking about his deficiency. He's thinking about his life. He's thinking about what he needs to repent of. He's thinking about how to make his way right with God. He's thinking about the effect of the word he has had upon his life. And then you burst in. And you say, ah, you're too quiet. What's happening to you? And then you, dis you disturb his way of thinking. And the conviction on him fades up. And before he regains his calm again, before he regains his thoughtful process again, it takes a long time. Why don't you leave people alone and let them direct their lives and let them think about their future and let them think about how to make their ways right with God. Teach yourself, thou that preachest a man should not steal. Does thou steal? Look at verse 22. In verse 22, thou that seest a man should not commit adultery. You say, you say, you say, you know too much of what other people should do, what other people should be, what they should not do, and what they should do. You know too much about how to help other people to get to heaven, and you're too quick, but you never think about yourself. Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, does thou commit, or thou abhorrest, thou that abhorrest idols, does thou commit sacrilege? You talk and talk and talk. You're too much of a teacher, but you are not much about a thoughtful person about a meditative person and you also just to talk and talk and talk and teach and teach and teach and instruct and instruct and instruct teach yourself apply the word to your life first that is what will make you make progress on the way to heaven in ezekiel chapter 13 Reading from verse 22, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 22, it tells us, it says, Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad. With lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad. Look at that righteous person, he's minding his own business. Going in the path of rectitude is going in the path of purity. And while it's like that, you, you concoct a lie, deception, and you throw it at him and you tell him something that will jolt him. And then it says, You make the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. And uh, you're strengthening, strengthening the hands of the wicked that I, sh that he should not return from his wickedness, from his wicked way. And you are promising him life. You know, somebody is uh, crying. Why are you crying? He came careless as a girl, as a lady. And um, my mommy and the Lord, I need to tell you, now I am pregnant. 
What do you think? What do you talk about? Repentance. What do you talk about? Checking her life and standing to become straight. But that sinner, who oh, you see, is that why you are crying? You, can, you never can tell what that baby will become. Forget about what you have done. Forget about your guilt. Uh -uh. She should not forget about her guilt. She should not forget about the need to repent. And then you cheer her up. You don't know. She might become a doctor. She might become a president. Wait. Hold on. Even if that baby becomes the president of a country, I, adultery is adultery. Fornication is fornication. And if that lady that gives birth to a president does not repent, you'll spend eternity on the other side. So uh, we should not just be you know, telling people this and telling people that, we bring them to the point of repentance. Look at number three here. Number three here is the conversation with mindful tongues. That means that you are consecrated to Christ. Christ has saved us. And because Christ has saved us, we want to follow in his steps. What will Christ say? What will Christ teach? How will Christ talk? What contribution will Christ make to this conversation? It is that consecration to Christ that makes us so to set our conversation aright. Look at James chapter 3, the second part of verse 2. The second part of verse 2, it says... He, the one that does not offend the word, he will, the same, is a perfect man, is a matured man, is a well-controlled contro man, is a thoughtful man, and is able also to bridle the whole body. When your words don't have any control, and you talk and talk and talk, and you talk beyond the level of grace. And there is no grace in your speech anymore. It means you've gone astray and you lead other people astray. We're looking at Psalm 50 verse 23. Psalm 50 verse 23, it says, Whoso order offereth praise. Purifies me, that God talking to us, and to him that ordereth his speech, his conversation. You order the conversation. You want to throw out an arrow, and you order it. You have a target. You have a point. You want to reach. You order, just like a public speaker. A public speaker will order, will arrange, will organize what he wants to say because he has a target. A private speaker will think before he speaks. A private speaker will look before he leaves. He would say, now I want to talk to my neighbor. I want to talk to my friend. I want to talk to my husband. I want to talk to my wife. You order your conversation. When I say this to him, when I say this to her, what do I intend it will produce in his life? From a member to another member, from a minister to the member, from the member to the minister, you order your conversation, you order your speech, you order the things you say so that it will bring something good. He that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. 
I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. A good, good headquarters, say amen. First Peter chapter 3, we're looking at verse 10. First Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 10. It says, For he that will love life and see good days, he that will love life and see good days, what does that mean? Life happy. Life joyful. Life exciting. Life progressing. He that will see good days and have love life, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Because that thing is like a boomerang. You throw it out, it comes back to you. You bring sadness, you bring sorrow, you bring unhappiness, and you bring uh, you know, depression in the lives of other people. It will come back to you. What we sow is what we reap every time. In fact, what we reap is greater, higher, more devastating than what we sow. You sow the wind, and then you reap the whirlwind. That is the reason why you're very thoughtful. I can't talk like that to her. Maybe she merits it. Maybe she invited that. But I can't talk like that. Because if I talk like that, it will come back as boomerang. It will destroy my own life. And it will show that as she is, so I am. Be evil. If I throw the word back to her, I am evil too. Is she undisciplined, indecent? If I throw the words back to her, I become undisciplined myself. Is she evil? If I pick up that and throw it back to her, I become evil myself. That's the reason why it says, He that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from that they speak no girl. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, Let him eschew evil, resist evil, Deny evil, blot out evil, and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it and ensure it. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, against them that talk evil, against them that shout evil on mountain tops. Look at a uh, number, uh, the next number here, the control of mammoth creatures with man's Manipulating cord or cane, manipulating instrument. And that's why he tells us in James chapter 3 and in verse 3 Behold, we put beads in the horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Behold also the sheep, which though they be so big and so great and so massive, and they are driven with fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem. A very small rod, a very small cord, a very small cane, whither, whithersoever the governor, the 
master, the director directs it. It's saying that, you know, when you go to the zoo, you see lions being tamed, the elephants being tamed, and you see big whales being directed by some small, small conditioning instrument. And yet, we're coming to number three here. Number three, it tells us, number three now, it, it says in uh, number three, the directing force of a little instrument. The directing force of a little instrument. The little instrument we have that then gives us the, uh, the control over the big, big things. It tells us uh, the directing force of a little instrument. We're looking at James chapter 3. And James chapter 3, we're looking at verse 5. In verse 5, here it tells us in verse 5, it says, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindles, light, do very big and do very serious, yet there is that little member that controls everything. It's um, number three, verse, that's uh, James chapter three, verse five. James chapter three, we're looking at verses five and six. James chapter three, reading from verses five and six in verse five even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindled look at verse six in verse six it says and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members and then it says that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the cause of nature and it is set on the fire of hell in this section we're looking at the um, we're looking at the communication of our little member for either condemnation or commendation. Number one is the danger of the little tongue as a little fire. The danger of a little tongue as a little fire. Number two is the damnation of loose tongues in lasting fire. Number three, number three, we have the dynamite in liberated tongues with lightning fire. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the danger of the little tongue as a little fire. We read that verse 5 already. Uh, look at uh, Psalm 12. Uh, and we're reading from verse uh, 2. Psalm 12, uh, reading from verse 2. They speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbor. With flattering leaves. And with uh, a double heart. Do they speak? Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, The Lord shall cut off all flattering leaves. Not some. All flattering leaves. You know, somebody is doing something wrong, but 
you are expecting to get something, a profit, maybe money, maybe some material things from him or from her, and she is doing something naughty. He is doing something damnable. And uh, then he says, oh, my friend, what do you think of this? Oh, you are so great. You are so wonderful. You are whatever I can think about. You are just good. But you know in your heart, this is a sinful man. And this is an evil woman. But because you want something, you flatter him, you flatter her. The Lord God says, the Lord himself shall cut off the flattering leaves. You're saying something about somebody, and you know the fellow is there. You really know that that man, that woman needs to repent and needs to turn around, but I wouldn't allow him or allow her to hear from me that, you know, uh, it will look like I'm judging him, judging her. And you flatter him, and you flatter her. You're nice, you're good, you are great. You are the best person I ever interacted with. Ah, but that's flattery. And you know, you don't believe that in your heart. The Lord himself shall cut off all flattering leaves and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Who have said with our tongue we will prevail? They use the tongue as a weapon to conquer. Conquer people, crush people, destroy people. My tongue is mine, and with my tongue I will prevail. And then it says, who is Lord over us? Well, if you are born again, Christ is Lord over you. If you are a real child of God, Christ is Lord over over you if christ is lord over you is lord over your tongue is lord over your eyes watch what you see is lord over your ears you watch what you hear is lord over your plans is lord over every influence in your life it tells us in uh, proverbs Chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 18. As a mad man who casteth fire, brands, and arrows, and death. Look at verse 19. So is the man that deceiveth his neighbor, and saith, I'm not I in sport, a mad man is not in control of his senses, is not in control of his utterance, is not in control of his real life, the center of his life, as a mad man that throws fire, brands, and death. So, if the man that deceives his neighbor, a man that tells the untruth to his neighbor. And then when you check up later, uh, my friend, you said, you're a believer. And I took you at your word. See what you said to me. I was discussing with uh, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, and he told me the real version of the story. You told me a lie. <laughs> so, you took that series. I was only playing. Uh, they play with lies. They play with deception. Uh -uh. Uh, just like oh, we're playing now. And I told you what I told you. I just wanted to, you know, just jolt you. And just, you know, make you to run. And then I'll say, come back, come back. That was a lie. So is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and says, and not I in sports, you know, a real believer, conscious that Christ may come anytime. A real believer who has been praying and singing, come, 
Lord Jesus, I'm thinking when the Lord, when my Lord shall come. And he's thinking like that, and he knows the people that will be qualified to go when Christ comes, that the people that are holy and pure, blessed, are the pure in heart and pure in speech. For they shall see the Lord follow peace and holiness with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord who will ascend to the heel of the Lord who will stand in his holy place. They that have clean hands and a pure heart, a real child of God is always thinking about when the Lord shall come. But he is not thinking like that. He can play with deception. He can play with lies. He can play with, you know, whatever sin. Oh, I'm just, I'm just playing. I didn't mean that. A child of God will say what he means and will mean what he says uh, we're told in uh, matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 we're looking at verse 34 oh generation of vipers who uh, how can ye being evil speak good things if we're evil at heart if we're depraved at heart if we're sinful at heart we cannot speak good things regeneration must take place salvation must take place sanctification must be a real definite experience it says oh generation of vipers how can ye be in evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh the mouth speaketh. Look at verse 35. It says in verse 35, it says, A good man, a godly man, a righteous man, a spiritual man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things, and an evil man, a depraved man, a sinful man. It says an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Verse 36. In verse 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, every thoughtless word that men shall speak, every deceptive word that men shall speak, every injurious word that men shall speak, every deceptive lying word that men shall speak, every envious word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment, verse 37, in verse 37, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Look at number two here. Number two, the damnation of loose tongue in lasting fire. Loose tongue. There's no control. There's no check. There is no caution. Loose tongue that will be in lasting, everlasting for In James chapter 3, looking there at verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That's it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the curse, the cause of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. There is a lasting consequence, there's an everlasting consequence on the words we speak, the words of jealousy. The words of envy is going so well, it's running so fast, it's having so much, 
and there's jealousy and envy and then because of that we speak the words of envy it says Pilate knew that these people that are saying crucify him crucify him he knew that they did that they were saying that because of envy envy they're becoming popular and if this man continues like this, everybody will believe on him and the Romans will come and take our nation because of that, not because of all the resources they were giving, because of that, words of envy, that's why they wanted to destroy him. When we're children of God, it takes envy away from the heart. So no words of envy. Jealousy away from the heart, no words of jealousy, anger, anger, anger away from the heart. So there are no words of anger and lust, evil concupiscence. It takes lust away from the heart. So there are no words of, you know, of lust that you speak to another person, that you make the person think or begin to think of fleshly activity. When all those things are purged and taken away from their heart, then we don't have those words anymore. It tells us in uh, Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. O generation of vipers, ye serpents, and ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell we come to number three now number three the dynamite in liberated tongues with lightning fire when we receive the illumination of the spirit the impartation of the spirit when we receive the inspiration of the spirit of god because jesus said he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When the Holy Ghost comes upon us, there is an impartation. There is an illumination. There is an inspiration. And then it shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. It tells us in, um, in Isaiah chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 5. Here is the prophet saying, Then said, I, woe is me. Woe is me. Hey, there are people that will come to uh, Isaiah. The yeah, prophet don't say that. Woe is me. Let him say what he believes from his heart and the way the conviction has come upon him from the Lord. There are people, uh, you curse yourself. No, what has happened that makes you say, woe is me. Uh, there are people, they don't, they say, that's negative. Uh-uh. It's the negative that makes, that brings a positive result in the heart and the life of a man that makes the proper confession. And then a good thing takes place. As a result of that proper confession, woe is me if this is like that, woe is me. If the judgment of the tongue is like this, woe is me. If all these things are reaching down and marked down in the presence of God, woe is me. If all this kind of careless thought and careless tongue and careless talk, if all this is like that, if Christ shall come today, woe is me for I am, I am a man, I am undone because I am a man of unclean leaves. How is it? You know, prophets like this, they said what they ought to say. And it's reaching down for our edification. It's reaching down so that we can learn from what has happened to other people. And it says in the word, it says, I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of us. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, then flew one 
of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from of the altar. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and he laid it on my mouth. Talking evil. Can we go ahead and say, keep on preaching, keep on prophesying, and keep on proclaiming the gospel? If our tongues are dirty, defiling, deceptive, are we permitted to still go on preaching and preaching and preaching? No. So Isaiah needed this experience from the Lord. Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Thy sin purged. Look at verse 8. Then also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? After the cleansing of the tongue, after the purifying of his nature, after the Lord had touched and transformed the heart, because out of the dead and the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, and after that sanctifying fire had come in the heart and on the tongue. The Lord now said, Whom shall I send? A new will go for us. Then said I, Then, only then, we're unqualified, we're disqualified, while we talk and talk and talk gracelessly. We're unqualified to come and be proclaiming and preaching. While we talk angrily, and we're angry at everybody in our household. Nothing the do pleases us. While we talk disrespectfully to everybody around, and we look down on them, stamp them down. And while we talk evil, evil, we talk lustful things to people, maybe over the phone or whatever. We are disqualified, unqualified to preach the word, the pure word of God. But when we come to God in all sincerity, when we come to God under deep conviction, and we say, Lord, I know this is not right. I did it in private. I said it in private. But I know that you are the a listener to every conversation. You know what I say, you know what I do, you know what I talk, and you know how defiling are my words unto people privately. It is when that is cleansed, we can now say, here am I, send me. It will send you. It tells us in Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 2, Reading from verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2, in verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it sat, it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. The fire from heaven. The fire to cleanse. The fire to purify. The fire to prepare for the experience of Pentecost. Then came loving tongues like a of fire. The fire to bring, to replace deception with dynamism. The dynamite that now came upon them. And it sat on each of them. There were men there sat on each of them. The women there sat on each of them. Let that fire come and destroy and burn up the chaff 
in our lives because it says it shall bring the fire unquenchable that will burn off every chaff every chaff useless every chaff that has no profit every chaff every conversation that has no meaning in our lives let the fire of the holy ghost come and burn everything away then will you be able to say lord here am i send me let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer and you report yourself to the lord you say lord here is where i've been here is the way i've been using my tongue you feel convicted that's right that's right talk to the lord and say lord here am i here am i let not my words destroy me send me to hell but let the fire of heaven come purge my heart purify my heart burn off all these useless idle injurious deceptive lying lustful evil words away from my heart and life if any man if any woman if any person offend not in word the same is a perfect man perfect woman perfect person matured person controlled person a cautioned person having mastery over his words over her words mastery born again show it by the words you speak i'm sanctified show it by the words you speak does your word heal or hurt does your word break down or build does your word flatter or factual you say something factual Is it word of envy or the word that establishes other people? The words will speak. By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Wash me, cleanse me. Make me whiter than snow. And always remember, words are like eggs. Once they fall down, you cannot gather them together and make use of them. And once the words are spoken, like eggs, they fall. What can you do? Go to God in prayer and say, God, how careless I have been. How thoughtless I have been. Speaking about my neighbor. Speaking against members of the church. Speaking against the members. Every time judging, judging, judging. How I hurt other people, destroy other people, and the people that had been built up by the Spirit of God will break them down until they have no confidence anymore to do what the Lord had called them to do. Tell the Lord, 
when you get back home, take everything we have learned back to the Lord. Be more quiet than you have been in the past. Be more thoughtful. Be more prayerful. Be more purposeful. Be a matured man, a matured woman, matured believer, a matured minister, preacher. Let the fire from off the altar of the Lord touch, transform your tongue, your life. Father, we thank you tonight for your word that has come to us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the sincerity of the word that you have not spared us. We are praying, O oh Lord, that your fire from your altar and the fire of the Holy Ghost will transform our heart, will transform our language, will transform our conversation and discussion with other people in Jesus' name. Use us to your glory. If you can use transformed instrument, if you can use transformed tongue, here we present ourselves to you. Use us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Touch every leaf. Touch every mouth. Touch every tongue with the fire from heaven in Jesus' name. And as we are looking for people to use to make lives better for others and to raise up others and to pour grace into the lives of other people and to turn them the direction of the cross and of Calvary and the cross, Lord, I pray, if my brother dear, my sister, they take hold of him, take hold of her, use everyone to your glory in Jesus' name. Here are we, here we are. We pray, Lord, send us where we'll do your will. Let your grace go with everyone. Your power with everyone. The caution, the control, go with every one of us in Jesus' name. Where we have misused our tongue, no more. We'll now talk right. We'll lift to people. Will be sincere, will help people to know you more and more in their lives, in our lives, in our ministries, in Jesus' name. Forgive the past. Set us free from every carelessness and make us instruments of the grace of God in the lives of everyone around us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you all.